breaking news, Lieutenant General Oladipo Dia, former Chief of General Staff under the late head of state of Nigeria, General Sani Abacha, is dead. His death was announced in a statement by his son, Prince Uyesimi Lola Dia, on Sunday morning. It read, and I quote, on behalf of the entire Dia family, home and abroad, we announce the passing on to glory of our dear husband, father, grandfather, brother, Lieutenant General Donaldson, Oladipo Oyeyinka, Dia retired. And in his words, he also said, our dear daddy passed on to glory in the early hours of 26th March, 2023. Please keep us in our prayers as we mourn his demise at this period. Further announcements will be made public in due course. Well, our prayers with the dear uh, family and, you know, the uh, grief that they are passing through at this critical moment. And also, the people of Ogun State of Nigeria and also Nigerians who are the benefit of the service, the commitment, and the uh, loyalty of uh, Lieutenant General Ladi Kodia in his lifetime. May so rest in peace. To our next subject, the presidential election petition court has granted permission to Atiku Abubakar of People's Democratic Party, Mr. Peter Obi of the Labour Party, and the Allied People's uh, Movement and also the Action Alliance for political parties to serve their petitions on Bola Tinubu through the All Progressives Congress. Ashwa Jibola Tinumbu, president-elect, has announced. On Friday, a three-member panel sitting in Abuja, presided over by Justice Aruna Samani, also granted permission to the main three petitioners to serve their petitions on Ashwa Jibola running mate, Kashim Shetima, as well as Kabil Masari through APC. The panel granted a request while ruling on three separate ex parte applications filed by Atiku and PDP, Ubi and the Labour Party, and the Allied People's Movement, APM, arguing the motion on behalf of Atiku and the People's Democratic Party. Itao Jagede, senior advocate of Nigeria, prayed the, the court to grant his client permission to serve the petition and other accompanying processes on the respondents through the APC. The United Kingdom also said it had embarked on an exercise of collecting information with the aim to impose visa bans and other sanctions against politicians who engage in electoral fraud and anti-democratic exercises during the just concluded Nigerian general election. According to the United Kingdom, the individual has to be punished were those who engaged in violence and voter suppression in the governorship and state assembly elections in Nigeria. In a statement by the British High Commission in Abuja, the United Kingdom said there were positives to take away from the elections. They noted that violence and voter suppression were observed in many states, including Lagos, Enugu, and Rivers. The United Kingdom, following suit, initiated earlier by the United States in condemning the use of inflammatory ethno-religious language by some public and political figures. Let us now try to break down the salient points from, from those stories. Joining us now for that purpose is Clement Mwankwo, a lawyer and human rights activist. He's executive director of Policy and Legal Advocacy Center, PLAC, as well as convener Civil Society Situation Room. Thank you for joining us, Clement Mwanko. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, former convener. Okay, former situation. convener. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Once a convener, always a convener. <laughs> Isn't that so? Uh, that's the Nigerian way uh, to look at it. But let me ask you quickly. We have had this election, February 25, March 18. Various ob observers have written their reports. But as someone who has been watching Nigerian elections, observing Nigerian elections, 
analyzing Nigerian elections for decades, and specifically since 1999. What do you think of this current process? Do you think Nigeria is moving forward or Nigeria is moving backwards? Thank you, Ruben. I think clearly everyone agrees that the elections that were, have just been held has not been a progressive one. Uh, certainly, Nigeria has moved backwards uh, with these elections. Uh, there are two ways to look at it. One is, of course, that the legal framework uh, guiding our elections uh, have significantly improved. And, and we saw that improvement um, in, in 2010 when um, President Jonathan assented to some constitutional amendments that were made. Uh, some of those amendments include the amendment that uh, reduced the age for appointment to uh, national commissionership and chairman of the uh, electoral commission, as well as resident electoral commissioners. Uh, secondly, the, age, uh, re, um, the issue of appointment of Rex. Uh, previous to 2010, the president simply wrote up a list of Rex and um, they were deployed to states. In 2010, there was a constitutional amendment uh, that changed this. Uh, and then we move forward uh, with that. Uh, and all of this was coming because there were recommendations made by the Electoral Reform Committee headed by Justice uh, Mohamed Uwais. Uh, and that committee had recommended several, several uh, uh, options uh, regarding how you could improve the independence of the Electoral Commission and improve the electoral process. And we did see some of it implemented. In 2022, there was a new electoral uh, law that the National Assembly passed, which the President also assented to that uh, improved or entrenched into the legal framework the use of technology. Um, and we had all been very expectant about the elections and the fact that this new law would help to improve election delivery. But unfortunately, uh, and if we go back to 2007, um, that was the election that was very scandalous uh, for Nigeria. And even the president who was elected then uh, President uh, Yaradu of blessed memory um, admitted that his election was faulty and that the process that brought him to power was flawed. And it was on that basis that the uh, Electoral Reform Committee was created and these recommendations were made. Uh, looking at the 2023 elections, it reminds us very starkly about the 2007 elections, the failure of process, uh, the impunity of um, uh, process and execution of process, uh, the mode in which resident electoral commissioners were appointed, uh, and indeed um, members of the commission were appointed. Uh, you did see that partisan elements were brought into the electoral commission, and that took us back to 2007. And so what you have seen with the conduct of the 2023 general elections has been uh, the manifestation of partisanship, even within an election management body. Uh, in, in certain parts of the country, particularly in the southeastern part of the country, a single governor nominated more than the five recs who were appointed. Uh, and these recs, uh, in some instances, even defied the national headquarters of the commission and basically ran the elections to the uh, convenience of their uh, appointors uh, or, nomi nominate, or, nomi or nom those who have nominated them. So I think that for all of us, uh, and it doesn't bear restating all of the flaws with the 2023 uh, general elections, uh, these elections have been uh, not commendable at all. And this has been said by virtually every observer who has observed what happened with the 2023 general election. So I think that going forward, it becomes important to ask the question, uh, where are we headed? Can we continue with our democracy with this type of um, uh, election administration? Certainly no. I, I think that the uh, election administration system is thoroughly discredited and we can go forward with what we have. Specifically, you talked about reform, electoral reform. We've been talking about reform since 1999. And in 2022, 
We have Electoral Act 2022. We have Beavers, technology. Everybody say, oh, this will be the game changer moving Nigeria forward. But even that failed. And you yourself, you talked about, okay, the future. What do we need to do to address all those challenges, omissions, discrepancies, irregularities thrown up by the 2023 process in Nigeria? What will you advise? Thank you, Ruben. I, I think the uh, recommendations are coming forward from election observers. Uh, there's already the aggregation of opinion that there needs to be an inquiry into what happened with the 2023 general elections. Uh, there's also an agreement that you can't continue into uh, the next uh, elections, even the off-cycle elections that are coming up in November, that you can't continue um, with this sort of election management system. Uh, everyone is convinced that, one, there is a human element, and that human element includes the fact that you have partisan political elements appointed uh, into the Electoral Commission. Uh, and then beyond that, you also really have uh, the fact that there have been the inability of this country to implement the recommendations made by the election reform, uh, electoral reform committee that was headed by Justice Uwais, uh, known as the Uwais Committee, and recommendations that have not been implemented include the mode of appointment of uh, election officials. The whole idea of getting uh, the constitutional amendment made in 2010 that required the National Assembly to uh, confirm nominees by the president for Rex uh, was to ensure that the National Assembly did a thorough job. Unfortunately, uh, the National Assembly in this case did not do a good job of confirming uh, both national commissioners and the Rex that were nominated by the president ahead of these general elections. So we need to go back to ask the question, how do we appoint into the election management body Rex to avoid a situation where governors uh, make those nominations and of relations and of partisan political elements into the commission, uh, and um, even at the national level to ensure that um, uh, the national commissioners who are appointed are independent of political influence uh, and that their tenure is secured. Uh, and then also to ensure that you do have an Electoral Offenses Commission put in place. This recommendation was part of the Ways Committee recommendation. Uh, the Ways uh, Committee re recommended that an Electoral Offenses Commission should be put in place to ensure that some of the things and uh, uh, um, practices that we saw, which uh, from your earlier news report, uh, foreign countries uh, even adding to uh, adding sanctions or punishment for those who violate our laws, uh, we shouldn't get to the point where foreign countries are doing so. We should have within our legal system uh, punishment for those who incite violence, punishment for those who preach hate speech, and we did see a lot of hate speech, well, punishment for those who suppress votes, including even the Electoral Commission suppressing votes by not providing materials, by starting voting late in specific parts of the country in order to create advantage or disadvantage for those who are running for elections. Uh, that's what an Electoral Offenses Commission would do, and that's what would help to put people in check, including even INEC itself, because INEC officials would then be subject uh, to accountability um, by, uh, for the actions that they take or fail to take. So we, we must get to the point where you look at the Electoral Act, you look at the offenses committed, and you ensure that people are prosecuted for violating it. The impunity of election administration in this country is so, so uh, uh, scandalous, which is why election officials would do what they do, uh, collect money from, from politicians, uh, fail to deploy on time, uh, seize materials, uh, share with uh, political uh, parties information about election management and administration to create advantage for them. So you must hold people to account. And these are the things that we believe that they, uh, whoever comes in uh, 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 after May 29th or on May 29th uh, needs to take very seriously. Otherwise, it would be a laughing stock for the world. That's we are already at this time. Well, Clement, see, life is not black and white. I know from what you have said so far, you are not impressed with what uh, Yakubu Mahmoud and his men 
and women have done with this election. But are there certain positives that we can take away from this 2023 process that you may have observed as someone who has been involved in this civic space for almost forever? So are there certain positives that we can work upon, that we can develop? Or is it all black in terms of what we have experienced uh, between February and March in Nigeria? I think certainly uh, th there are positives, and um, the positives uh, are not captured between February and March alone. And certainly, if you have followed the election process and you saw the assurances that were given and you saw the promises that were made, then you cannot but feel completely uh, embarrassed by, by what has been delivered as elections. Uh, but the positives going back to before February uh, is the fact that uh, you have had um, um, the Electoral Act in place, a new Electoral Act, uh, which recognized the importance of reducing human elements in election by accepting the introduction of technology. Of course, there was uh, the, the failure with using it as is indicated. And I think for me, that's, that's, that's a positive. Uh, but when you look at the way that the election has been managed, I am looking for the positives. Uh, it's difficult to find. Um, and quite frankly, I, I think that um, you really need to look at the election quite closely to understand how um, much we have um, returned to the past. Uh, if you look at even the whole issue of uh, gender representation, you, you basically, and, and you can't you know, describe or try to analyze this election between February and March. You look at the fact that in the National Assembly, we had, um, we had six or seven senators. Uh, in this election that has just been held, we now have only uh, three senators, uh, female senators emerging. Um, maybe there's a slight increase by three or four in, in the House of Representatives, but that's not significant uh, to understate or underline uh, the fact that um, representation for women, uh, again, has uh, fallen far, far below what is standard practice across uh, several jurisdictions of the world. So I'm searching for the huge, huge positives that I can celebrate. Uh, I'm looking for it. Uh, but I think that perhaps the only thing that I can say with respect to positives is the involvement of Nigerian citizens. I think that this is one of the most highly mobilized elections where citizens decided that they needed to come out and exercise uh, their franchise. So in terms of mobilization, yes, huge, huge, huge mobilization. Uh, but again, don't forget the fact that a lot of those who were mobilized had their votes suppressed by the way the elections was managed. Okay, in other words, more negatives than positives. Voter apathy, voter suppression. Yes, but let me ask you, your group, uh, the uh, PLAC, talked about uh, an electoral monitoring web and uh, an app that will be used to monitor the electoral process and all of that and encourage people. How did that work out? Because that was funded, according to you, by the European Union. But it looks like technology just fed everybody, including even your group, the Observer Group. How much success were you able to record? What we did, uh, and, 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 and Plak is uh, part of the Nigeria Civil Society Station Room, who, which um, deployed across the country. What we had produced was an electoral app, uh, and the whole idea was that people can ask questions, uh, people can look at the app, and can have questions answered about the legal framework for the elections. Uh, they can have easy access to the elections uh, and information related uh, to the elections. Uh, that app is, is uploaded. It's, it's right there. It's still being used as we speak. Um, we did produce uh, simplified versions of the Electoral Act and indeed a legal framework surrounding the elections. All of this is still available. It's still being used. It's still being uh, consulted by people who need information. So for us, it's very successful. It's still running. It's going to be there. And people can access it, um, iOS or Android uh, platforms, in order to get more information. So we think it's very, very uh, successful app that we have put out. And uh, we think it's a huge contribution 
to awareness around the elections, and, and we're happy about it. Okay, final question, final answer. What do you think of all this furore among the political parties? Now that the matter has gone to the um, presidential election petition tribunal, we, we see all the spokespersons still fighting out there, you know, dragging each other and heating up the polity on ethnic grounds, on religious grounds. You are an advocate. You are a lawyer in the uh, Temple of Justice. What, what will you say to all of this? Well, I, I think clearly that um, the parties that have uh, not been announced as winner have gone to court. Uh, those that have been announced as winner, of course, should be uh, without prejudice to what comes out from the courts, uh, should be preparing to listen to Nigerians about an agenda for themselves. Uh, how a new administration um, will be prepared to listen to people and uh, be prepared to ensure that um, they build on going forward. Um, uh, there will be a government uh, inaugurated on May 29th. The legal process may not have finished by then. So uh, what is clear is that the person who has been announced as president-elect uh, would be uh, sworn in. Uh, and that's what the Constitution says. Uh, we believe that those who have gone to court should, of course, uh, pursue their matter. Those who have been announced as winner uh, need to be very conscious of the fact that those who are aggrieved have a right to express themselves uh, within the law. Uh, so I think that if all sides recognize this, then all of this bitterness and continuing squabbles in the public space uh, would, would disappear. But I think it requires a lot of discipline uh, amongst people to know what should be said and, and what should not be said. Uh, whatever the flaws are with the elections, we do know that um, uh, the Electoral Commission has announced a winner, and it is important that um, uh, every disputation around the elections um, focus around doing so within the legal framework of the country. Well, thank you very much, uh, Clement Wanko, for joining us on This Alive, this Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel.